I was hoping you'd just take off when I'm going home. <laughs> I love that song. Mm -hmm. There is nothing to hold me here. Yes, that's right. Now I've got a glimpse of that heavenly place. Praise God, I'm going home. Amen. Yeah, love that song. You sing it well. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Claire. You can uh, sing it again. <laughs> no, uh, you, you. <laughs> You got you evidently you've got the SPN. You know what I'm going to say? <laughs> SPN. <laughs> uh, I want us to look today at, and this this not even turn out to be a series. What happens next? Blessing. We're Lord. in a period of holes. If you study the book of Daniel in the ninth chapter. You'll see that God gave Israel 70 weeks of sevens. And that's 490 years. And 483 of those years was up to when they crucified our Lord. And then there's a whole period. It's a valley, if you will. It's a timeout for Israel. And that 70th week of Daniel doesn't start until the Antichrist comes on the scene. And then the 70th week of Daniel will begin concerning Israel. Now, certain things will happen while we wait. And today I want us to look at just a few of those things. Turn to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verse 25. And we read this. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Here we have the word mystery again, and that there are several mysteries in the New Testament. One of them, and the first one mentioned, was the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. The next one that came up was the mystery of the church, the called out assembly of believers made up of both Jew and Gentile. The Old Testament saints didn't see that. They had no idea of what the church was or was going to become. So they didn't see it. We call it the assembly of a new man. We are a new man in Christ Jesus, a new creation, a new creature. We call it a bride. We call it a building. We call it a body. So here we're talking about how long Israel will be blinded as pointed out in the scripture. Paul lets us know that not all of Israel is blinded, even up to this day. Paul told us that a great number of the Jewish people and, and some of the priests actually believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and believed that he was the Messiah, so they weren't blinded. But the majority of the Jews were blinded. They did not and do not to this day believe that Jesus was the Messiah. So God says that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. So we're now living in that time period, that whole period, that time out for Israel between the 69th and the 70th week of Daniel and the fullness of the Gentiles is simply the church. When the last person receives Christ as their Savior, we're leaving this world. Amen. Yes. Yeah. We no longer will be here. Christ will, God the Father will look over to God the Son and say, Son, go get your children. Mm -hmm. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. 
and the dead in Christ shall rise first, yes, and we which remain shall be caught up, yep. raptured, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh, yes, yes. Now that's what's going to happen to the church. Yes. So as we look at this, we, we're living in a valley right now between the first coming and the second coming of Christ. Now, we believe that each one of us who has a normal physical body has the same parts has the same organs, has the same everything that has a normal physical body. Same number, bones, everything. I know there are exceptions, but I made the statement that you have a normal physical body. You have the same. So it is with the spiritual body of Christ. God himself only knows that number. But when that number happens, there's going to be no sticking around. Mm -hmm. We're going to be gone. Yes. The stone is rolled back, as mm -hmm. the song said. Yeah. Gone, the tomb is empty. And we're going to be gone. The world is empty of Christians. Praise okay? Lord. So, in this day, God is calling out a people for his name's sake out of the Gentiles. Now watch this. Another mystery, the mystery is mentioned in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. This is speaking of the, about the time that is coming when God says iniquity, that's enough. Mm -hmm. God will say, I've had all I'm going to take of this iniquity. Okay? The Holy Spirit of the God, of, of God, is the one who lets. He is the one who is a constraining influence upon people, nations, religions. He is the constraining influence. Believe me. If I didn't have the Holy Spirit of God living in me, I'd be a heathen. That's right. Yeah. You would be a heathen. Yes. If every one of us didn't have the Holy Spirit of God constraining us yep. and telling us, don't do that, mm -hmm. it'd be an awful world. Yep. It'd be gone. We'd, absolutely. It'd be awful. Uh, so when the constraining influence is gone, can, it says, can you imagine the world is in the bad shape of this, of this is today. If the Holy Spirit of God was not here constraining what it would be like. It would be unbearable. And that's what's going to happen when the Antichrist takes over. There'll be no there'll be, there'll be complete lawlessness. There'll be complete immorality. Because there will be no Holy Spirit constraining the people to do the will of God. He'll just say, when the Holy Spirit and the church leaves, he'll just say, have at it. <laughs> do as you wish. Filth, it, it, it used to be when I was a young man, Filth is now everywhere. When I was younger, I hear people say, hey, if you want to get new postcards, if you want to get new books, go to France. They've got them everywhere. You can get any kind of filth, filthy pictures you want. Now, all you got to do is go down to the local drugstore and buy your little book, and you can see anything you want to see between anything you want to see. People, animals, it makes no difference. Filth is everywhere. But can you imagine what it would be like if there was no constraining agent? How bad it's going to be. So, filth is everywhere. We're, let me give you an example of how bad it's gotten. Even in our elementary schools, our school books 
are telling our children that living a life as a gay or a lesbian is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. It's true. And you are to support it. You are to back it up. <laughs> and you are to say you can do as you wish. Hogwash. wash. The truth. They, yep. they are ruining our children. Mm -hmm. The colleges, they even get worse. The liberal profession that we have today has changed our whole society. And that's why you see so many socialist, communist liberals out there rioting. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing. Yep. You don't see the other side of the equation out there rioting until just recently we had some conservative Christian people protesting against the anti-protesters. Mm -hmm. And they've actually had a couple of fist fights. And I say to the Christians, go to it. <laughs> Knock them out, John. <laughs> yep. and, and I'm sorry to chase that rabbit. <coughs> uh, but that's where I'm at. When the great restrainer, the Holy Spirit of God, leaves, it will be awful. Now, don't get confused with the times of the Gentiles and the fullness of the Gentiles. The times of the Gentiles is when the Antichrist comes and the city of day, Jerusalem, is trodden down and it's just torn in pieces. And you find that in the 21st chapter of Luke. And it's actually the Lord Jesus talking and he's telling that the Antichrist shall scatter the people of God, the Jews, once more during the last days. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. This is Jesus talking. And shall be led captive unto all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. The Antichrist is the last great leader of the Gentiles. And he will form and make peace with Israel for three and a half years. There's so much of this that I can't get into it in one, two, three, four, twenty sermons. Now I'm just going to hit the highlights that pertain to this sermon. But he's going to make it peace with Israel for three and a half years, and then sudden destruction shall come upon them. As one preacher said, and then all hell breaks loose. So the fullness of the Gentiles is when the body of Christ the last person is saved. That completes the fullness of the Gentiles. And then the times of the Gentiles kicks in. Israel, and I want you to look at this, is out of the will of God. They have been for years and years and years. Israel has 9.1 million people living in the boundaries that they now have. Not the ones that God gave them, but the boundaries that they now call Israel. 9.1 million people. God says that when the Messiah comes, he will gather all of Israel into the land. There are 6.7 million Jews living in Israel today. By statistics, in the book that I'm reading, said that over 60% of all Jews living in Jerusalem are avowed atheists. Wow. They do not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. They're still waiting for the Messiah. Only 20% of those are Orthodox Jews, and they certainly don't teach that Jesus was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for the Messiah right. to come. So there are Christians that live in Jerusalem. There are Muslims that live in Jerusalem. 
There are Palestinians that live in Jerusalem, and there are Jews, 6.7 million. There are 14.8 million Jews living in the world today. So all of Israel is not in the land. Forty-something percent of the Jewish people live in Israel. God says that they will all be there when he's going to take charge and sit on the throne of David. The fact that they're living in the land without the Messiah, gathering there is a sign that they're out of the will of God. And the Messiah has not gathered them there yet, but he will. The word of God tells us that the very fact that the Lord Jesus is going to send his holy angels out to gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. You find that in Matthew chapter 24 where it says, No in certain terms, he speaks about his coming after the tribulation. When the rapture of the church, church takes place, we meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. If the Lord is in heaven, we're there. If the Lord's on earth, we're there. Yes. If we're going to be forever with the Lord. Yeah. The second coming of Christ is when he actually sets foot on the Mount of Olives. And that's what I'm talking about here. Listen to it. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, that is the Jewish people, from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So we know that Israel is out of the will of God because they're not gathered in their land. They're not they're out of the will of God because the Messiah is not there gathering them together. We also know that they're out of the will of God because they are in their land without their God. You know, I just told you the statistics on how many of them believe and how many of them don't believe. <clears throat> we also know that they are being out of the will of God, they are out of the will of God because they are living in Jerusalem without their temple. Yeah. Let me tell you an interesting fact. Between the 1967-1973 wars, some wonderful Christian Jews from America wrote to Mr. Ben Gurion, the Prime Minister, and I may not be saying that right, G-U-R-I-O-N, and said to him, hey, in the Old Testament, every time Israel got out of the will of God, they went to God and rededicated themselves to God, and God supplied their needs. He took care of them. They wrote this letter to the Prime Minister of Israel and he sent them back a return letter and said, thank you for your concern. Israel is out of the will of God because they're not worshiping their God. The majority of them don't even believe in God. And they're out of the will of God because they're not worshiping in their temple. In 1963, Israel offered Jordan $8 million for the temple site. Now, there are, there are two words in the Word of God that stands for this, this temple site. One is concerns the Holy of Holies, the center of everything right in the sanctuary. The other word concerns the whole property. The south wall, the north wall, the east wall, the west wall. Well, this is what he's talking about when he says they're not, they don't have their temple site. They went to Jordan. Jordan owned all of Jerusalem. Okay? 
And they went to Jordan and offered them $8 million for the temple site, and Jordan said no. Later that year, Israel went back to Jordan in 1963 and offered them $21 million for the temple site, and Israel, Jordan said no. So then, in the 1967 war, Israel captured the Jordanian armies and they captured the temple site. Yes, just the yeah. They now own the temple site. Yes. But there is no temple being built as of today. Yeah. One of the reasons is because the Mosque of Omar, the Muslim religious temple site, mm -hmm. is setting on that property. Now, Jesus said that there would not be one stone left unturned upon that temple site. When he was talking about that, he was talking about the sanctuary. There are no stones unturned in the sanctuary. It's gone. But the east wall, the west wall, the north wall, the south wall, there are hundreds of thousands of stones still standing. The Antichrist when the temple is rebuilt, when he comes on the scene and makes peace with Israel, they will rebuild the temple. Then in three and a half years, he will destroy that temple when he turns on Israel. And there will not be one stone left upon another. He will completely destroy it. So Israel is out of the will of God, and the Antichrist will have an easy time making a peace treaty with Israel. And while we wait, we've got to look and watch of things that are going on in our day and time. But the main thing that Mike said this morning that we have to do is that we have to win that last soul so that we'll be gone. We won't be here when the tribulation starts. We'll be gone. And Next week, I want us to look further into what will happen next. I want us to look at the effects of the rapture of the church. I want us to look at the alliance that Russia and her five cronies, and I'll give you the names of the nations, and I'll tell you where I got them, and I can give you a little hint. You want to do a little study? Go to Ezekiel chapter 38 and go to Genesis chapter 10. And you'll find out who made all of you. And we will go from there. And it's really, really interesting. I think you're going to enjoy it. All the countries that have made alliances with Russia. Now, this is not, don't get confused. This will not be the Battle of Armageddon. That's the kings of the east. That's a whole different deal. This is the minor little thing that's going to happen to Israel when Russia and her cronies get together and come upon Israel. And we'll talk about that. But it was today's message was just a start, just an introduction to what's going to happen in our day and time. And when we look at the countries that are lined up with Magog, which is Russia, you're going to see how it's all falling into place. And one country in particular that was a friend of the United States of America that has now turned is going to make a big difference. Mike, come and get a song. I realize this wasn't an, an invitational message, but listen, we got to be about the Father's business. we got to be out winning souls for Christ. We don't know when that last soul is going to say, Lord, I want you to become my Lord and Savior. And God's going to say, Son, that's the number. Go get your children. Amen. And we're going to be gone. Let's all sing. There is